This video is brought to you by Puppets War. Puppets War! Brat, 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 brat. When Puppets War came to me and said, Yo, you want to 3D print some of our models? Here's some cash. We love your channel, by the way. I said, excellent, another sponsor. That's what we want. How could I possibly overexert myself again on another sponsored video? How can I maximize the time and effort involved? I wonder. Diorama. So let's 3D print some minis, paint some stuff, and make some crazy shit. As far as I'm concerned, if your minis come pre-supported, I'm already like halfway into bed with you at this point. The fact that I can just leave this stuff printed overnight and, you know, go to bed and not have to worry about anything, it's, it's just so good, man. Now, these guys are the Brain Bugs from the Puppets War April Patreon. Kind of a mix between Starship Troopers and Independence Day, which is two pretty damn good things. Then we got their Sneaky Boy model, who is all kinds of three-point of hero landing pose cool. I also dug into their back catalogue and I was like, yeah, give me one of them too. You know, that ninja. Why make ninjas? Sci-fi ninjas? Give me the shit, definitely give me that. So we're gonna throw in some ninja marines? Yeah, ninja marines. Some jetpack fascists. And some winged insectoid gargoyles, which henceforth will be known as wigs. Sneaky Boy, I think, is by far the coolest model going into this. He's gonna have one end of the diorama all to his good self. I'm picking a colour palette for the entire diorama based on what's hot for web design and interior decor. Because colours are just colours, right? All joking aside, I'm not going to be watching changing rooms or anything, but I'm pulling my colour palettes from pretty much anywhere but other models at the minute. Probably won't make me a better painter, but at least I don't feel like I'm copying other models. As much. Also, the colours I'm going for scream out 90 Space Marine and Tyranids. Which is essentially what this diorama is going to be. I'm a 90s Warhammer kid, and for me it doesn't get more iconic than blue versus purple. Ultramarines versus Tyranids. That's how it was back then. This video is also one of the first times that I'm using the ProPro paint line, which shall henceforth be known as Ambrosia. And the Artis Opus dry brushes, which shall henceforth be known as Excalibur. I'm not normally much of a garbage tear shill fuck. When I like something, I like something, and if something's useful to me, and I think it might be useful to you, I'm just gonna sing its praises relentlessly. These paints and these brushes got me the highlights I needed with just dry brushing alone, pretty much. For the most part, the models on this diorama are just contrast paint, washes, and then the rest of the work is dry brushing. For a gentleman with fine motor skill impairment, I didn't think I would ever be able to get models to look as polished as they do at the end of this video. Being able to essentially edge highlight with strong pigments and dry brushes was just a game changer for me. So with the minis painted, I need to take a hot second to talk about the guys over at Puppets War. Puppets War have been around quite a long time now, like 10 years in the miniature business. And you've probably heard of them outside the 3D printing side of things because they've been designing their own miniatures, guns, bits, legs, torsos, heads, arms, teeth, fingers, candles, shell casings, grenades, wheels, 
jerry cans, novelty orc bumper stickers, that's a lie. And it's all great stuff and I've got quite a bit of it myself in somewhere. But knowing the quality of the physical miniatures they produce, I was over the moon when they said you want some of our 3D printing shit for free. Their STLs are available from Patreon, My Mini Factory, Colts 3D and directly from their website. Go check out their stuff and let them know that MS Paint sent you. You can find the links down below. Cool, let's get back to the video. Wait, that's not the video. That's me trying out a cheap and cheerful lens in a camera shop. There we go. Back in the studio where I've got room to breathe, move a camera around and slam some tunes on. Okay, so let's carefully plan out this diorama. Alright, you go there, Chief. Okay, you guys don't fit, that's a, that's a good start. And you're okay there, sort of. And you're... nope, oh, nope. There, there's fine. And you can just die there, sound, alright. Cool, planning done. The time being a factor, I'm not exaggerating when I say I'm grabbing whatever shit is closest to me and I'm just gonna make it work. A diorama made of balsa wood, copper wire and hot glue is a terrible start, but it is a start. Corkboard is such a neat and cheap material for making roads. Once it's torn up and put back together, it's got a great cracked tarmac vibe. And the natural texture of it is also pretty tarmac-y. Just be careful not to ruin the texture like I do later on. And speaking of texture, I gotta texture this base. So I've got some stuff from Ikea, which I think is like for terrarium making or something. But it makes great heavy grip rocks and I've got sackfuls of it. And some sand I stole from a beach in Northumberland. I'm priming as always with Poundland Grey and base coating with Poundland Black. Rather than going straight to dry brushing, I'm stippling on some earthy tones over the dirt and mud areas. Starting dark and working my way up to light. It will help make that final dry brush less aggressive and starkly contrasted. I'm treating the road very much the same way but with dark greys and working up to a pale blue grey for the edges of the tarmac. I got some moss from my garden centre, well done me. I know it'll eventually change colour, but that's all good. It'll make for some more interesting viewing than static grass alone, which I've also added off camera. I have no idea why I didn't record that, but you, know, you guys know how, how toughs work, right? You guys know how toughs work? I hope so.
Once it was all on, I could have done a wash to bring everything back down a little bit and blend it, but I just, I just didn't have the time to sit there and watch water dry, to be honest. All right, so this guy and this guy need a little bit of work. I've never tried this before and really hot glue isn't the way to go, probably, but time is time and I think I can convey the effect of a winged insectoid gargo, a wig, getting cut in half in midair. And the insectoid isn't the only thing flying in this diorama. I want all the flying units to be in the air. So, couple wire, twisted and left open at the end for the jetpack nozzle things. And some hot glue to thicken out the smoke trails. Then I need to think how to actually make the smoke and because I don't actually know, I'm just gonna go and do something else for a minute. I'm going back into the ground colouring and working weathering powders into it. I often lead with broad strokes of the brighter colours and then use grey and black powder to mute them back down and blend them in. I settled on mixing fine foam flock with PVA I coat the copper wire with it and this was this was definitely up there with one of the most tedious things I have ever done. No it's up there, yeah it's up there. And to get this fucking thing to dry faster, well I put it in the homemade dry faster you bastard machine which is a magic arm clamp, cable ties, hair dryer and a plastic bucket. Now see, a lot of you used to chat shit on Health and Safety Frog for not doing his job when I was just fucking around with solvents next to open flames and stuff and he was just sleeping on the job. But if Health and Safety Frog was still with us, he would have slapped my fat little hands and he would not let me do this kind of crap. Don't make your own dry faster, you bastard machine at home because it's, it's quite possibly, I mean, it's just really fucking dangerous. However, I did need to get this thing done quickly. But no, it is. He's so fucking dangerous, don't do that. <laughs> Hector, come back, please. All right, let's do some final touches, stick everything on, and send this diorama home. So there we have it. 3D printed minis from Puppets War, materials lying around the studio, pretty janky in places, but I can't fault myself for trying a bunch of new things and making them just about work. And thanks again to Puppets War for sponsoring this video. Of course, as always, thank you to my awesome Patreon community. You guys make my little world go round. And if you're new here, hit like and subscribe to stay alive. Cheer, 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 cheers. I'm out of here.